So I'm here tonight to share our story because someday you're going to be a nurse. And some of you might be the nurse that someone like me will always remember. I hope that some of you will be inspired to go into peds oncology. And if you haven't thought about it yet, maybe our story will encourage you to think about it. Nurses were part of our experience from the very beginning when I took Luke to our initial pediatrician appointment because the tumor had shown itself in his thigh. It was a nurse who looked at it and said, not to me, but to herself, said, oh my gosh, that's really big. I need to call in your doctor. Um, so she knew what she was looking at and had prepped our pediatrician before he walked in. Um, who then knew what he was looking at and referred us directly down to Mott at U of M. Luke also endured a febrile seizure on Christmas Eve of 2008. Um, he had presented with unexplained fevers um, for almost two weeks and his little body finally just said, I can't do this anymore, and so he started to seize. Um, and it was a nurse who was the first responder to that case. Um, and she knew what to do, how to respond, and the people on the team that she needed to call in. Um, so nurses were absolutely critical to our experience and to Luke's care. This is Nurse Marshmallow. Uh, her real name is Nurse Marsha, uh, but Luke was three, and so she let him call her whatever he wanted. So this is Nurse Marshmallow. She is an MSN nurse practitioner, and she was our nurse at the U of M Cancer Center um, for 15 months of Luke's treatment. And she was with us from the very beginning to the very end. Uh, she hung all of Luke's chemo in the infusion room. Um, so this is not a knock on doctors. I have huge, tremendous respect for doctors. Um, but nurses are doing the primary care. It was a nurse who saw Luke's tumor, knew what she was looking at. Uh, it was nurses who took care of Luke when he had a seizure. It was nurses who hung all of Luke's chemotherapy, um, who hung it, monitored him for the entire infusion process, and made sure that he was um, disconnected safely. So never underestimate how important your role is as a nurse. And nurses run the long-term follow-up clinic down at Mott. Again, this is Luke. So you'll notice that his hair is now gone and his eyes are pretty bloodshot. He had no eyelashes or eyebrows. Um, the big bandage in the center of his chest is the double lumen broviac. And that is how Luke received all of his chemotherapy, antibiotics, fluids. And nurses taught us how to care for this Broviac and how to, um, how to give Luke daily injections of Nucogen. Um, I actually couldn't do those. Uh, my husband learned how to do those, uh, but it was nurses who taught us how to do the subcutaneous inject injection. Um, nurses taught us how to wash our hands. So I know how to wash my hands, just like many of you do also. Um, they taught us about maintaining a sterile field about sterile gloving, um, how to take care of biohazards, and how to do blood draws and injection, injections. Um, so those two little tubes hanging from Luke's chest, I actually, nurses taught us how to clean the caps and how to actually pull blood from the tube so that we could then send in the blood to the lab for analysis once a week. Again, more equipment that nurses taught us how to do. This is uh, one of the many boxes full of stuff that we had for Luke and his treatment. There are, um, the green things are the caps that went on the Broviac. The, um, the tube with the orange head on it facing you was for the blood draws. And I also learned that um, different color tubes mean different things. Um, and so depending on what your nurse or doctor has ordered, that's what color tube you use to draw the blood. Um, this is Luke in July of 2009. He presented with 104.8 degree fever. Um, it turned out actually that both of the lumens of his Broviac were infected with multiple bacteria. Um, and it was actually, again, a nurse who triaged us in the emergency room at Mott and listened to what I was saying about him and his symptoms and figured out the lumens probably infected, and she was able to convince the doctor to write orders to um, swab the lumens, um, and it turned out that it was infected. Um, and that was the second Broviac that was infected, um, and then after that, they pulled it and he got a new one. This is an example of a chemotherapy bag. That's not blood, that is chemotherapy. It's called doxorubicin. Uh, Luke endured 70 weeks of treatment and experienced seven different chemotherapy agents throughout his treatment. And again, it's nurses who are doing all of this work for patients. This is a team of CRNA 
nurses, so a certified registered nurse anesthetist. Again, another amazing field that you could possibly go into. Um, but this entire team of people and all of the equipment was wheeled into the room every time that Luke received radiation. Uh, Luke got 28 days of consecutive radiation, uh, 10 treatments, 10 treatments to his lungs, and then all 28 treatments to his um, pelvis and thighs. And then because Luke was so little, he had to be sedated um, so that he could lay perfectly still while he was in the machine. Uh, the bed on the machine there was custom made for Luke uh, so that he could lay in it. And then um, that monstrosity is the actual machine that issued the radiation. All roads lead back to MSU and to Spartan Nursing. Uh, this woman here is actually, her name is Nurse Marion, um, and she was a graduate of the Accelerated Program here. Uh, this picture was taken in September of 2009. This was Luke's last inpatient chemotherapy experience. Uh, and I don't have any pictures of night nurses because they all worked at night and they're ninjas. Um, but special shout out to Amy, Patty, and Rachel because night nurses are a very, very special breed of people. Um, so thank you to all of you who will start as a night nurse. Um, throughout your nursing education, you will hear about interdisciplinary communication. Uh, and I put this picture in here because it's real. It does actually happen. Uh, these women behind Luke, uh, the woman on the left is uh, Dr. Valerie Castle, and she's the head of Peds Oncology at U of M. She was there the day that Luke was diagnosed. The woman in the middle, her name was Nur. She was a nurse practitioner and a member of Luke's team. And then the woman on the right is Dr. Allison, who was a third year resident. Okay. And all of these people were part of Luke's team, and they all needed to know how to communicate with Luke, with us, and with each other. This is Luke and his baby brother, Connor. Connor was 10 months old when Luke was diagnosed. Uh, cancer, especially childhood cancer, impacts the whole family. Uh, we say that cancer was in Luke's body, but we all endured it and experienced it. Um, and nurses were critical to educating our family unit, not just Luke, but all of us, um, and really cared for us on every level, especially the psychosocial level, and explaining to us what the impact of Luke's diagnosis would be on our entire family. Uh, childhood cancer waits for no one, not even your fourth birthday. So this is Luke on December 7th of 2009, getting chemotherapy in the Peds Oncology um, Infusion Unit down at Mott. So Luke went from that to this. This picture was taken um, in September of 2011 uh, at the 46 Mamas Shave for the Brave event, which was the first time that I shaved my head to raise money for childhood cancer research. Uh, Luke has been cancer-free since October of 2009, uh, and he really is a statistical anomaly. The five-year survival rate for Luke's diagnosis is less than 35%. 